very warm welcome um, to all our grade 11 learners and also to grade 12 learners that might be joining our grade 11 learners. I'm Carlin Oppold, I'm from New Orleans Secondary and my partner in crime and my colleague. <laughs> yes, Carlin, thank you. It's good to see you. Um, I'm Lorraine Kuhn, I'm from Yuguna High School in Wellington and uh, once again it's good to start a year off with our life sciences program. And I can see good New Orleans is already uh, connected and all the other schools we invite you to connect either via the internet or via WhatsApp. And uh, please ask your questions as we go along because we have a very important topic today. It is pertinent to our matrix. We've done it last year, but we'll write exams on it and also for our grade 11s. Yes, and, and for great the topic, life. what is yeah. it? Our topic today is human impact on the environment. If we can have our slide there. And grade 11, keep in mind it's 70 marks of your paper 2 in your final examination. And then it is carried over to grade 12 where it counts as 25 marks of your paper 1 in um, your grade 12 year. That is paper 1, 25 marks. So, Lorraine, let's start and let's look at our our topic here, and we're going to look at the, at the following, atmosphere, climate change, water, food security, solid waste disposal, and loss of biodiversity. And for the next 50 minutes or so, it's going to be a mouthful, so we want you to listen and also pay attention and make a few notes, and if you have your handouts there, make use of it. Yes, and that is so important, what we have on our slide now is that in nature, all things are recycled. It's only when humans come into the equation that we can talk about waste. And you will remember in grade 10 when you did ecology and the environment that you were taught and you learned about the oxygen cycle, the nitrogen cycle, carbon cycle, and there are many cycles in nature. But humans, waste unfortunately. Yes, Lorraine, and I think if we look at that, that, that um, slide again, we can see that we, as humans, we take out of the soil and out of nature what we need. We call that the raw materials, but the waste that goes with it and the energy that is lost in the process can never ever be returned back into the soil. So whatever we need, we take, but the waste that we produce, that upsets our um, cycle. We have quite a few problems these days. Um, I'm sure all our learners have noticed around them, wherever they live, that people are building new buildings, new homes, new office buildings, new schools. It's because there are more people. Everything is costing more. And even though we have a decrease in the petrol price next month, it is, it, it is still a problem in, in general. Everything is more. Transport is costing more. Um, I remember, Colin, when I was still at school many moons ago, fish was cheap and poorer people could afford lots of fish. Now fish is a luxury. It is a very expensive food because we've overfished the resources. Yeah, we must be very careful how and how we take things out because we deplete our resources. And um, another thing that I've noticed and that I've just mentioned the other day is we look at our weather patterns. It was still yesterday, I'd said it was still in February, and already we can notice that all of a sudden it's darker sooner and in the mornings, it's still dark when we get up. That means that, why is it that our seasons are changing so early? But that's for another day. The five environmental issues that you need to study is the following. First of all, we're going to look at atmosphere and climate change. Then we're going to look at the availability and the quality of water, which is quite a big issue with us in the Western Cape at the moment. Enough, but I think just about the whole country yes. have issues with water. If it's not too little, it's too much. Then also food security, which is a huge issue. A large proportion of our people, as, 
and, and not just in South Africa, but in the world, do not experience food security. And then we look at solid waste disposal, another huge problem. We produce so much waste. What is happening with the waste? And then one other very important issue is our loss of biodiversity. Now let's start with atmosphere. What is atmosphere? First of all, it's a mixture of gases. Why are those gases there? First of all, we can also, we know those greenhouse gases and we say there's carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, water vapor, because they all trap heat from the sun. Why is it important? Because they must maintain our temperature on Earth. But they are there for to control our, our temperature. What happens if there's too much of it and we look at that? Then climate. We can't just look yeah. at climate, Lorraine, we as if it's... It's actually today a and tomorrow. day in, in Stellenbosch, Paul, Wellington mm -hmm. today. It's not too hot, not too cold. Uh, so we can't say the climate is a nice day of 28 degrees. That is our weather. Mm. Our climate is the weather patterns over at least 30 and even better 50 years. In other words, how with the seasons, the days, annual rainfall, monthly rainfall, then we can talk about climate. So climate is a long-term concept, but climate influences weather. In other words, in the sense that if the climate changes, it is because weather has changed for a number of years. And that is what we've been experiencing now, is that we can experience climate change because we experience different weather situations. Um, I've, I've, got a f I've got friends that farm, and they've said that they've moved their whole farming program by a month because of changes in average temperatures in the air as well as in the soil. So we do have climate change, and we experience it as these very hot days or too much rain, etc. We can also just ask you, please, if you, we are too, if we're too quick, we have one of the questions or, or responses here that we are too fast and too quick. Um, we have about over 60 slides that we want to talk to you about, so we, we hope that we get to everything. You have a little bit, a booklet that will, you will get. If you don't have it today, this presentation can be downloaded and just ask your teacher at your school. It is there, it is available for you later on so that you can watch it again. There's absolutely no way that you have to copy everything. You cannot copy everything. I mean, cannot wait. But I have to say hello to a lot of you. Nolita, comprehensive, somebody from Chibeni, uh, who do I have here? Um, yes, welcome, and we will say hello to you from time to time. Please ask your questions and keep your questions to the topic. Greenhouse gases, Colin. Yes, I just mentioned earlier that the greenhouse yeah. gases is very important because they are our heat absorbing gases. But now what is the greenhouse effect, Lorraine? And um, if, we, yeah, if we look at one of the greenhouse gases that we're going to talk about the causes of it, and the effect it has nowadays is carbon dioxide. You see, Colin, the greenhouse effect is actually part of what makes life on Earth possible. The fact that the sun heats up the Earth during daytime at night, and we know that it's night on the one side of the globe and day on the other side, but during daytime, whichever side we're busy with, we know that the sun heats up the earth. At night, the heat radiates from the earth back into the atmosphere and into space. We have a layer of gases that prevents all the heat from radiating, which means that earth is slightly warmer than it would have been had every little bit of heat evaporate or, or radiated. Now, that is the greenhouse effect. It's simply like putting up huge uh, um, glass greenhouses or plastic greenhouses.
greenhouses that we have now, if, if you drive around in, at farms, it keeps the earth slightly warmer, makes temperatures more moderate, water in a soluble form. But I'm sure your mum have told you, has told you, too much of a good thing is not good. And now when too much heat is trapped because of too thick a layer of gas, we have overheating of the earth, and that is the greenhouse effect. Yeah, if we can just look at this slide, we can maybe just show them there. This is the normal. This is a natural greenhouse um, effect to keep and maintain the Earth's temperature. But because of all our activities, human activities, larger concentrations of greenhouse gases are being trapped. You can see there's a thicker layer, and it does not escape like it should into the space. But it is trapped, and that means that the Earth's temperature, normal temperature, is a little bit higher than usual. Uh, um, now, what are the effects of this global warming because of this greenhouse effect on agriculture alone? We know that, first of all, changes in temperature will lead to a loss of biodiversity because we have, especially in the tropical forests, we have very fragile um, plants there, so they can't keep up with temperature changes, and, and that is why they die out. We see nowadays more frequent storms, weather extremes, storms, floods, droughts. We're experiencing a drought, the worst in 33 years that we've had. And we'll talk about that later if we've had one before, and why is it that the impact is so much bigger today? We are losing coastal lands because of rising sea levels, because of melting glaciers. Longer growing seasons in cool areas, that means food security is being compromised. We have an increase in incidence of pest. That means that there are more, because of warmer weather, maybe there's more pests now. And then unpredictable farming conditions, as you have said, Lorraine, earlier, because um, people are now postponing planting for months because of the unpredictable weather patterns. And then also the quantities of the fish and our seafoods, they are changing because of warmer or an increase. And we don't talk about four and five and six degrees even in water. We talk about one degree and two degrees mm. increase in our, our water. And, and you must also remember grade 11s and the 12s that are listening, and I see there's a lot of schools, even from the Eastern Cape Cod, and it's fantastic oh. to have everybody aboard. You, you see, when we talk about an increase in temperature globally, we talk about the average. So in some areas we have colder weather, and in some areas much hotter weather. It's a, and, and in the end it is an average. Even if our, in our own country we experience the increase of disease. We know that at this time of the year lots of our learners and parents at home have tummy bugs. And sometimes those are viral, sometimes bacterial. We know that malaria, um, areas where malaria is find, found, are spreading. Yesterday I read about the fact that Lassa fever caused by a virus is on the increase in Nigeria and they don't know why. <coughs> Sorry, so there might be a connection to climate change. Well, let's turn to what you can expect in an exam on atmosphere and climate change. There's a <coughs> little bit a paragraph on the, the greenhouse gases and that leads to climate change. Now, climate change leads to melting glaciers, rising sea levels, and new and more frequent um, extreme weather patterns that is busy changing in our entire world. Now, if you get a paragraph like this, then you can expect some questions relating to this paragraph. It says further that water supplies are decreasing, crop hills are dropping, forests are burning, and our oceans are becoming more acidic. <coughs> Climate change scientists warn that if we do not reduce our greenhouse gas emissions, average global temperatures could increase by four degrees Celsius or more in the year 2100. We think it's, oh, well, I'm not going to be alive to experience They're this. They're not going to be alive either, but their children and grandchildren exactly. will be. And what are we leaving them? So there's just one little question that we have there. Write one phrase from the passage that indicates that climate change affects the following. First, how does climate change affect food security? 
Now it is about the instruction and it says you must take one phrase from the passage. And we would love to see some answers coming through. And then the second one. So you can either write the question or your answer relating to A or B. And a one phrase from the passage that indicates that it affects our water availability. And um, let's see if we have anything coming through. You have the, the wonderful screen there in front of you. Yes, our learners are very active. And here's our first answer. It says that for 1A, crop yields are decreasing. And there we have Absolutely. it. Crop yields are dropping. Right. So, but you must just uh, um, quote correctly. There we've got it. And there I've got another one. Your yields dropping and then about the water supplies decreasing. And our learners are actively taking part. And I've got a question here. How can we decrease climate change? How, what can we do can about I, it? And listen carefully. We can I just will before address you, that. Before yes. you do that, I see one of the answers here is that it could lead to drought. Do you think that you can give that as an answer? If the question is specifically asked that you have to write a phrase from the passage. So yes, we know it can lead to drought, but the phrase from the passage says that water supplies are decreasing. So be very specific. You must remember mm. this is a science and it is scientific knowledge and you must, uh, uh, um, the instruction that you get is very important if you want your And it's marks. very important that they have the necessary skills in answering an exam question. Read carefully and, as mm. Colin said, follow instructions. Because you know the meaning of the phrase, but you are asked to give the exact phrase. Right, Colin, our carbon footprint, what is that? Very important um, also issue that we must know. And for your purposes, know the definition of what is, your, what is a carbon footprint. First of all, it refers to the amount of carbon dioxide or any other compound consisting of carbon that is being emitted into the atmosphere by who? By me and you, by all our activities as, as, as individuals, as a company, and as a country per year. This is a big issue because you will see more and more companies especially, they are releasing their carbon footprint, which means that they say that we are taking care of our environment the question is, you and I, what are we doing to, re, to, to um, maybe just um, go to in, in, and lower our carbon footprint? Because the point is the carbon footprint is about the carbon dioxide emissions, as Colin has said. More carbon dioxide, more greenhouse effect. More greenhouse effect, more climate change, which in most cases, it's not just global warming, but it is warming. So just think for a moment, what can you and I do in, in our own little part of the world to decrease the amount of carbon dioxide that we release? We can't really stop breathing, but what can we do? So there are quite a few strategies. Yeah, there are quite Have a few. I, I'm, the one that just caught my eye now is number nine there. Mm. And it says, cut your shower time by two minutes for one month. And we in the Western Cape, we've been doing it not even two minutes. I think we do it like 30 seconds now because it's like carbon splashes. <laughs> but tell me, what does a shower and the amount of water that we use, what has that got to do with carbon dioxide emissions? The point is, when we shower, we use hot water. Hot water uses electricity. Electricity to be generated uses carbon dioxide or, or produces carbon dioxide. Um, do you leave your cell phone charger in the plug at night and the tiny little red light is still burning? It uses electricity. Apart from in contributing to your electricity bill, it also uses electrici electricity, it's a tongue twister, mm. for which carbon or fuel, coal, is burnt, producing carbon dioxide. Do you drive to school in a fancy car, or do you walk if it's safe and not too far? Do we make, or do we burn rubbish in our yards? 
or do we put it in a bin that's taken away by the council, if available? We need to think of those things. No, definitely, but I think carpooling, you see so many, and especially at, at, at in the mornings at school, mm -hmm. we can see so many children being dropped off at school. Instead of that, more people driving together, less cars on the roads. And um, do you have any idea these disposable cups that we use and how much pollution it and how much carbon dioxide is being released by in the production of those, mm. those things? Mm. Then um, I think we'll read up a little bit, but there are a lot of uh, uh, um, tips that you can... Uh, now, here's another question for you, and this is the type of questions that you can have on this. Energy in South Africa is mainly generated from coal power stations. Very important. The pie chart below shows the energy consumption in different sectors of a South African city in 2007. You must determine the value of X. Guys, this is a pie chart. If you take everything together, it should give you its percentage. Everything should go up to 100%. So are we not going through this? Make sure that you know how to do it. And at the end of the day, you take your 100%, deduct all the others, and you will get your X, which is 18%. Right. Two excellent questions here, and then we need to move on to the next topic. Yes. Um, one very good question is, uh, um, is carbon dioxide the most important greenhouse gas? It is one of the most important. Yes. Another one is methane, CH4 emitted by the decomposition or rotting of plant material and also emitted by animals. Um, cattle, for instance, give off a lot of methane gas. And then, of course, industrial processes. So those two are the most important. Uh, there's another question here. We talked about uh, the causes of malaria. Um, malaria is a parasite. If you haven't done it yet in grade 11, you will with microorganisms. It is a parasite of the blood transferred by mosquitoes. Mosquitoes are the vector, the carrier. And we know that mosquitoes like warm, wet weather so that they can lay their eggs in water. So yes, that is why when warmer weather is spreading over an area, that is why mosquitoes will do that. And... Um, Yes, and then we had a sound problem, but you must check your network, please. Just before we move on to our next topic, Lorraine, um, maybe just for them, look into in, in your notebooks that were handed out to you. Um, you will find nice questions on there with the memos with it. One of the uh, um, relating to the coal power stations, because this is typical, the type of questions that you can expect. Um, it says, explain the impact of the increased use of energy generated from coal power stations on climate change. And, you know, it's important that we know these issues so that when we discuss other alternative ways of energy, that we don't sit there and say, but we don't know why it is necessary that we should seek alternative methods of generating power. Water. And, yes, we've mentioned earlier that water is so important in the Western Cape. It's important in the Northwest province, in Northern Cape, and in all our other provinces. Because if you don't have too little water, this is the time when you experienced flooding, maybe, and because of too heavy rains. So, yes, I know the Eastern Cape sometimes have floods, sometimes drought. And it's not just about water being available. You said right in the beginning, mm. it's also about the quality of the water. There's lots of water out there. But how much of it is available to humans as clean water to drink? Something, some sobering thoughts. I yeah, just want to take them through this. The same water that existed on Earth billions of years ago still exists today. Think about it. It covers most of the planet, but only 3% of that water is fresh water, of which Less than 1% of all fresh water is readily accessible for us for human consumption. A quarter of all clean water that enters our home. Guess, where does it go to? Yes. Ouch. And this is also one of the ways that we can, must rethink of our toilets, what we do. 
And I must say, here at the Stellenbosch University, they have amazing ways of using and, and, and reducing the water and our usage. school too. And remember, if it's yellow, let it mellow. If it's brown, flush it down. We won't go into detail. Let's continue. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, but one thing that is sure, our water sources are under immense pressure. And it's time for us to give water. I think, yeah, we all, all know that we must give water a second thought. What is the definition of availability of water? It is availability for irrigation or usage per person per annum within a region. Here we have cut it down to daily use already in the Western Cape. No less than 50 litres per person. And I try and reduce that even more. We all do. Yes. And we're very proud of the ways that we do. But the point is, the availability of water is, must be such that that available water must also be healthy if it's for human consumption. In other words, clean, not with parasites or disease born, uh, um, causing germs. And that sometimes is part of our problem. Earlier, Lorraine, I men mentioned about the fresh water or why is it that we have a drought? Didn't we have a drought earlier on? Yes, we had droughts before. But one of the main reasons why we have not enough available water for us is that one. A rapid increase on, in our population. Mm. No one has actually thought about the increase in population that will explode like this. Mm. So it's not that, that the drought and the water that is there is not enough for the number of people that we have. And this is also taking up a lot of our water, more irrigation. More people, more, more food, food, more farming, more water needed. Exactly. And this is now de a decrease in our annual rainfall in a lot of regions. And we see it. And this is also, how is it, how is it going to impact our industries and also our social development? I mean, I have a swimming pool at home. It's empty. I can't afford even to think of filling it up. And what is happening? The cost of water is increasing. We have level 6B of restrictions here in Western Cape. And the cost of water is increasing. It has increased. So the cost of water is, is, is going up. And, and, the, and the biggest sufferers from this are the poor people yes. and the homeless who do not have access to money to go out and buy bottled water or to get water together to keep it in a container. So yes, it's a bigger problem than we think. I just want to say once again, and I won't repeat, we are going fast. This is not your class lesson where teacher gives you time to copy from the board. If you don't have the notes, go to YouTube. Um, Colin, you know better where they can get all these things. I think they must just type in telematics and Tele they will find. Telematics yeah. and they will and find. And life sciences and you might and, find And you this. will find the same slides and if you don't have the notes. Right, um, let's continue. Yes, if we look again once, what is it that influence and affect it? It's first of all, all fresh water running down. You can see the rivers running dry because all the water is being restricted in dams. We destroy wetlands. Wetlands is a, it's, it's when it's on its driest, there's water available for animals because it is clean water that goes through a, a, a system, a filtering system. But this is maybe the biggest effect is how much water we waste. At your schools, do you still drink water from your hand under a running tap? Look at the, or do you catch up all that water that's running away under your hand? How much water? goes wasted, not only by us, poor farming practices, and it, the fertilizers that goes in with it, and we'll talk about this later on, is also, and then in your house, if you have a leaking tap, or a toilet, or any faulty pipeline, then I think your, your, your penalty must be much bigger, mm. because these are the things that we really mm. need to maintain. There's a question here, why don't we use the seawater? We are busy with desalinating, in other words, taking out the salt from the water, using it. But it's expensive. We need to build the installations. 
And the point is, it doesn't help if we try to get water and water and water from sources and we still waste it. So yes, um, that is one idea. Th this actually Dubai is now going to seriously think of going to find an iceberg somewhere and towing it to do, uh, um, their country. The problem is that frozen water doesn't melt that easy and they mm -hmm. say it's going to be a big problem to get the frozen uh, um, water into a liquid form, but that's a story for another I mean, day. I mean, I mean, there are many other challenges that go with it. If yeah. you think of how many, maybe hundreds and thousands of years it has been in that form, so how many other viruses and things are trapped in that ice? And some well. of it's some of the purest water that you can get, but we need the yeah. ice. In grade 10, you learned about eutrophication when you did the minerals as part of chemistry of life. So can we quickly very quickly go through it so that you can, just to catch up and so that you can remember what you did then. Eutrophication is a phenomenon that occurs when farmers, for example, use fertilizers to grow their crops. Not all the fertilizer is absorbed by the crops and some of it is washed down by rain or in rivers to water sources. Now, fertilizers are supposed to let plants grow, and algae are plants too. Now you've got lots of fertilizers in the pond, for instance, or in the dam, and you have what they call an algal bloom. In other words, suddenly, lots of algae grow. They can cover the surface of the water, blocking sunlight from, pe from penetrating deeper layers. They all they start to die because they've got a relatively short lifespan. And they go to the bottom and two things happen now. Because of blocking the sunlight, deeper plants cannot photosynthesize. Less oxygen in the water. The plants will die, the algae will die. The decomposition process also uses oxygen. Now oxygen is depleted in the water and other organisms will die. And what you will find in the end is a dirty, stagnant pool with no life left. And that's terrible, really. It is. There's a question also. Look into in, in your little booklet. You will find there, quite interesting. It's about, it's, it says, explain three ways in which aquatic alien plants like the water hyacinth could upset. Now, you see, this is a different type of question. Lorraine has just explained to you what eutrophication is. Now, they don't ask you to explain what eutrophication is that you've done in grade 10. But you must know for grade 11 and grade 12, you must know what eutrophication is, because if you should get a question, it can be something relating to the balance in our ecosystem. And they want to know how mm. you ups, uh, it's upset. And there... It is relating, once again, it relates to eutrophication, all this, those things there, but it is also about alien plants that outcompete our own indigenous species and then... Therefore, decreasing biodiversity. That's right. And, and sorry for coming in here, we've had a question, what is biodiversity that we're going to discuss later? Mm. Biodiversity is the variety of organisms, the variety of species in the environment. So, yes... Okay, Colin, we've done water now. We've talked about um, the atmosphere and climate change, and there they can see what thermal pollution was. We had a question about that. So, yes, um, oh, really? water from factories yeah. and power factories, stations yeah, increasing the nuclear, temperature nuclear of the water. Nuclear power station, yeah, in Cuba, right. and Cat. They all they heat up the water, and it changes the um, type of plants and things we see in the sea. Let's get to loss of biodiversity. Yeah, that we've just said. So we have about less than 20 minutes so that we can see what is biodiversity you have just explained to them. But biodiversity, the problem that we're having at the moment is we're losing our biodiversity. They say about 35 species that has not even been identified yet, it goes it, 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 it dies out, it becomes extinct before they, we can even identify them. And sometimes per day, and it, it's, it's mind-boggling, we can't think how much it is, but still. And we're living 
You've done in grade 10, you've done the mass extinctions. We're living in the sixth mass extinction, losing biodiversity. Colin, why? Because of? Of our human activities. Remember, we are doing the human impact, and this is the only extinction phase that we are in. It's not going to happen. We are in our sixth extinction phase because we, as humans, are responsible for loss of bio biodiversity and the loss and extinction of species day every single day. Now, loss of biodiversity, we refer to habitat destruction. And our habitat destruction is because of our farming methods, overgrazing, monoculture, and golf estates that, that use up huge amounts of, of land and habitat. But, but think of when you put up a golf estate, you must clean up that and clear that, that section. What happens to all the plants and animals that used to have that section of that land as their natural habitat? So it's a loss of, and they must either they find another space to stay or not. This is a big problem in our country is poaching. Rhino horn, ivory, bushmeat, and, and really. It was in the paper this morning, yeah. seven rhinos on one oh. day in the Shukluwe Reserve in KZN. And, and it makes me so angry. While we talk about alien plants, there's a question, what is the difference between alien and exotic plants? All alien plants are exotic, but not all exotic plants are alien. And what do we mean by that? We know that an indigenous plant or animal is an organism that occurs here naturally. It is its natural habitat, its natural environment. Exotic plants and animals come from outside. Let's say a rose that was uh, um, important f imported from Britain, but actually originally came from China. A rose is not an alien. It doesn't take over our environment. Black wattle or Port Jackson, they are also exotic, coming from Australia, but they're also aliens because they outcompete our own natural indigenous plants. So I hope that is clear. Colin, deforestation. Yes, I can also say the messages coming through, all your messages will come on a link that we will see and we might just be able to answer your questions. Yeah, we've answered a lot yeah. of them already. Right, deforestation, as it says, deforest. D mean to take away. To take away our natural forest, cut it down. Why? Because we need it. But forests are also important because they are referred to as carbon sinks because they absorb large amounts of carbon dioxide during photosynthesis. So we must always maintain our forest because it is effective in maintaining our carbon cycle. Why are we uh, or cutting down um, our, our uh, forests? Because we need harvesting or we need to harvest firewood. We need it for agriculture, building materials, furniture, ornaments, cutting down trees for charcoal. And um, also we know that it is increasing frequency of forest fires because of the charcoal that are being, being prepared in the forest and I think Somewhere in the Congo, they had this huge problem because they are also now removing the natural, the gorillas from that area. So also then the planting commercial forests for the production of paper, and we know what that means. Once again, in your book, you will find a little um, questions on this relating how and what type of questions you might get. So we are going to, to go a little bit further, and this is what deforestation, at the end of the day, what is it? A cause it caused desertification, deserts, l dead uh, um, soil, nothing that can grow there. And then mm. we get to our fourth um, uh, issue, and that is food security. Very important issue because you know, 7.6 billion people in 2025, we expect to have 9 billion people. That is frightening, and it those is. people must eat. And the tragic thing is that 50% of all food produced, well, 40, let's say 40% of all food produced on Earth is wasted. Northern America, the USA alone, wastes 50% of all food produced. That food is enough to feed 
all the hungry people in the world. It's a matter of distribution. How do we waste buying too much and having to throw away? Not planning, and I have to admit that it sometimes happens to me too, and I'm sure it happens to you. And we don't even have to go so far. Yeah. Guys, just check what you throw into the bin at school. Sometimes it's frightening to see how much food is going wasted yeah. and goes into the bins at school. So some, something for us to think about. And there's always somebody along the road who hasn't had a meal that day or even the day before. We see people scratching for food in bins, in, in waste bins. If we throw away food, just think what it would have meant to that person. You know, I hate the term junk food. There are too many hungry people to talk about any type of mm. food as junk. But that is just one another personal thingy. But there you've got the definition for Very food Very important security. for you to know, for example, purposes. Remember, it's not about how much food is available. It's how many people. There's enough food. Believe it or not, there's more than enough food that, is, that, that we have every day. It's just that because there's no access for everyone to sufficient, safe and nutritious food every day. Once again, we can see our biggest problem and challenge in this world is how do we decrease our human population growth? It's education, education, education. And this is what they are part of. Now you know that one shouldn't have too many children if you cannot care for them, if you cannot provide food and water. Um, and it's something that our young people must think about. Mm -hmm. Climate change, droughts and floods. That also affects yes. our food security because that means if there's, there's not enough food and then the pricing food. Ooh, once again, it's the poorer people that will be affected. Poor farming practices. We, take, we talk about um, land, and but how, will, how are we going to, what are we going to do with the land? If we don't know how to farm, nowadays farmers are scientists. It's not you having and inheriting a farm from your parents and then you can go and be a successful farmer. If your heart is not in it, you can't do that. And then we talk about genetically engineered foods. People are always going, hey, why are about? No, we can't eat genetically engineered foods. Sometimes because genetically engineered foods is changing the gene that can produce more food. You see, the problem is why some people are against GM foods is that they say it can decrease biodiversity. And it is true. Mm -hmm. If you only plant one type of crop because it is, gives you a higher yield, it's been genetically modified, all the other forms of that crop might not be planted anymore. So we reduce biodiversity. On the other hand, I am sure that without knowing it, all of you, I've been eating GM foods. Millis in South Africa, maize, is produced by a GM, a genetically modified plant. It is genetically modified to be more resistant against drought. And South Africa was the first country where the staple food was genetically modified. So there's pros and cons. And you need to think about it with genetics you are also, the, when you're in matric, also going to discuss this. Um, so remember, food must be healthy, it must be available, it must be clean, it must be nutritious. And how can we get that, Colin? Well, if we look at certain solutions to our problem, first of all, slow down population growth. You are a young generation, you are a new generation, you are educated people, and we know we can't just make babies and increase the population if we can't take care of children. We need to create jobs, reduce poverty so that everybody, what is the first thing that we've learned in our definition is access to food. So if we reduce poverty, job creation, then people can have access to healthy food. Then we need to sus have sustainable agricultural development. We need to know that we what we need to, to grow, how much we need to grow, and then also, this is very important, 
let us start growing our own vegetable garden. It's not possible for everybody, but any space, even it, if it is on your windowsill. I have a little bit, I have a little um, uh, uh, thing on my, my, my kitchen windowsill, and I grow my own herbs that I need, so I don't have to go out and buy and throw away what I don't need. Before we get to solid waste removal, mm -hmm. can we on just answer a question or two? Sure. Um, I've got a, a question here about food security in the definition. If we say it sh the food should be available at all times. Yes, that is important. It doesn't help you if you have a good meal today, but for the next week you don't have any food. So yes, being available at all times is also part of what defines food security. Well done. Then we have uh, a question, and I think this is some good thinking. How do alien plants affect food security? And you must remember that in many cases, alien plants take over land where agriculture could have uh, um, occurred. In other words, it's difficult sometimes to clear land from alien plants. Part of the success of an alien plant is the fact that they grow fast, they use huge amounts of water, and they have mechanisms to make sure that our own indigenous plants don't outcompete them. In other words, they are the better competitors. So land must be cleared. So in that way, yes, they can affect food security. So, so once again, you referred and you went back to deforestation. What do you think? What is the solution? We're looking at solutions because this is what we need. We need to find, if we deforest, what, what is the solution to deforestation? Just the opposite, reforestation. So let us plant, and that is why in September every year we have our Arbor Week. Let's plant trees. Let's, let's bring back our forests. And um, not all of us, one person at a time. One person at if, a time. If you do your own little bit in your own little corner, it can make a world of difference because the world consists of people in their own little corners. And of, uh, and yes. Yeah, and of course, we have our challenges. One of our biggest challenges is we say reforest, and then we say, but we <coughs> don't have the availability of water. Mm. So indigenous plants, that is our way to go. Indigenous plants, they are... They need less they, water, They yes. need less water. So let's go away with all the exotic and the alien plants, and we go for our indigenous plants because they are adapted in certain areas to use the water available um, that, that, that suits the climate of that specific area. And remember, we can use shower water, hand wash water. I've got this one specific pot that I keep, I keep the plants alive by the water in which I rinse my vegetables before I peel them. So yes, use the water. And then there was a question here about um, solid waste disposal. So let's have a look at that. Isn't that a pretty picture? I mean, look at Table Mountain, one of the seven wonders of nature. Oh, but look at what we have in front of Table Mountain. This is just what we say it should not look like. The more waste we have is because of our growing population that produce more waste. And what bothers me, Colin, is that sometimes you find that the environment of uh, um, residential areas or schools look, almost look exactly the same. Sometimes our people have the idea somebody else must mm -hmm. come and clean up. And, and it's actually each and everybody's responsibility to keep our natural as well as our cultural, in other words, our homes, our built environment clean. Yeah, I, I, I refuse to live in a dirty environment. Exactly. I, re I refuse to teach in a dirty environment. My kids at school, they know. We don't waste and we don't, uh, we don't and we clean up after we have used them. Let's look at solid waste disposal quickly. Lorraine, how do we manage those dump sites? How do we rehabilitate it? People, and how yeah. do we prevent our soil and water from being polluted? by these waste disposal or these landfill sites. You see, Colin, 
Um, I think we're thinking different these days about landfill sites. Previously, it was just a place to go and dump rubbish, mm. as we mm. saw in that slide w in, uh, um, where we saw Cape uh, or the Table mm. Mountain in the background. These days, um, people know and municipalities know that landfill sites, in other words, rubbish dumps, that they need to be managed very clear, carefully. They can be rehabilitated. In other words, when they fall, when there's not more, any more space to go and dump rubbish, you can cover them with a layer of soil or other material and slowly use it to establish plants again from the area, indigenous plants. In other words, to make it look better. But we've still got that rubbish at the bottom. In order to minimize the amount of rubbish that we throw away, we can recycle. Remember what we said right in the beginning about humans wasting and not recycling? Do you recycle at home? Can I we tell do. you a little yes. story about recycling? One of my ex-learners um, of many years ago, of course, she has created a company. And the other day she was on SABC3 showing her company of what she is recycling and making new products from recycled material. And she has a very wonderful and successful business out of recycling. So many yes. people are doing this now and they make millions out of recycling. And if we can reduce the amount of waste that we throw away, we can reduce the amount or, or the, the size of the landfills and we can increase the lifespan of such a landfill. Right, we're coming to the end of it and yes. I don't think we even talked and spoke about methane and where it comes from. Yeah, we, we so, mentioned it a little bit in the beginning with the climate change. Yeah. But using methane from our dump sites that is being given off for our domestic use, we can be used to, to, to regenerate electricity for heating and lighting for, for a certain area. So mm. it the, can't just uh, go wasted. We yeah. need to recycle in other ways as well. We see how people are making... Um, biofuel nowadays. In, in other words, if we use the methane to generate electricity, it's a cleaner form than coal, and we will decrease this mm. plant that produces energy through methane gas, mm. and we reduce the amount of greenhouse gas released. In other words, it's a lot of many, many flies with one. Mm. <laughs> it's so, yes... Many ways to skin a cat. Just to show that we do it in South Africa, there is one of the landfill gas to electricity plants in Durban, in South Africa. And as food waste decomposes, methane is being released, and methane can trap heat 26 times more the capacity of carbon dioxide. So there we have a nice solution. And we want to end off by telling you, if you go to your dustbin and in your dustbin you find anything that you can use again to be reused by yourself or by somebody else, if it can be recycled or repaired, nowadays we are so lazy, we throw away everything and we just buy new. Remember, for new things to be produced, it needs lots of water that we use, it needs not lots of energy and a lot of money. So, if anything is in your dustbin that you can reuse, recycle, or repair, do it, because waste is costly. And I want to end off by saying that our Earth is a closed system, as we've seen. Everything in it is recycled. And any nutrients and resources that we take out of this, this system, and when we bury it in a landfill, or when we burn it, it is resources that are lost to us forever. So, remember... It's a closed system. Whatever we use up, it will never be back again. And to answer a last question, there was a learner who said, yes, it's a good idea to recycle, but they don't have recycling bins in their area. Schools are ideal places to recycle. You can contact your local municipal, municipal offices and ask them if there is a company in the area that takes paper for recycling or plastic for recycling. These places or companies usually provide the bins. 
And if you can get your learners, it, it can be a project of the Life Sciences Club, if you can get your fellow school learners to bring, and, and even paper in school that you're going to throw away in the bin, to put it in a recycling bin or box, and then you phone the company from time to time, and they come and collect, and you can even make a little money for the school. Excellent way to recycle. Because the point is, our last slide here, is that each and every one of you makes a difference. And with that very heart-rendering words, <laughs> I think we've come to the end of the session for today. And thank you very much for joining us and thank you for all the questions. And we apologize if you think your question was important. It is important. And we'll try and see if we can find those questions and answer you personally or on the system. And please go to the Facebook page and like the telematics and there you can see your schedule as well. So from us, this, this afternoon we say goodbye and um, everything of the best for your test term or term that's, oh. that's coming up. And see you next week for another exciting topic. Keep well and thanks for all the uh, um, interactions that we had with you via WhatsApp. Keep well.